Materia and stats, what is it? How do I use it? Should I sell it or keep it? What stats are important and which aren't? If you have asked yourself any of these questions, then this video is for you. Stay tuned to the end where we go over some important end game tips with Materia and some good resources you should know about. As Materia and stats go hand in hand, we will be covering both in this video. Hey guys, my name is Stefan Ash and today I have another practical Final Fantasy guide for you. Today we will be going over Materia, Melding, and all the ins and outs of the stats. This will be geared towards new players and sprouts, so veterans, you can sit this one out. Unless you want to comment down below with some more information for any sprout reading. If at any time you get value out of this video, then limit break three that subscribe button down below and let's jump into the video. My goal with this video is to help you understand how these stats work and Materia, so when you get to endgame, you will not be completely lost like I was. Even though this is geared towards endgame or level 80, I still consider it beginner info as a lot of casual and freshly new 80 players can have trouble with this. Let's first go over stats. Each class has different stats that they rely on for DPS, healing, tanking, etc. I will first and foremost say that as you level on your first playthrough, you do not need to worry about materia or melding. You will just simply follow the Poetics video I've linked above or below in order to get through most of the game. The reason is we do not focus on this as the first playthrough you gain gear at such a frequent level that you can potentially waste a lot of materia since you'll be changing gear a lot. You can retrieve materia but again it's so frequent that it's just not worth putting any time or effort into. Either way, let's talk about the stats for different roles in a new player perspective. I will talk about all the stats first, strength, dexterity, critical hit, direct hit, etc. If you feel like you got a good handle on that, then you can skip to the materia and spirit bonding section, which I will time code down below. All stats affect the roles pretty much the same except for their main stat that affects the damage or DPS. We will go over each attribute just to show you the differences. Strength will increase the attack power for all jobs except those that use dexterity. These are Dragoon, Monk, and Samurai. If you have these jobs, then you'll notice all your armor is strength dominant for that stat. This is also true for tanks, but since they are tanks, vitality is considered their main stat for their HP boost. Dexterity increases attack power for jobs except those that use strength. So these are Bard, Ninja, Machinist, and Dancer. This means that for those jobs, you will see that job specific gear will be dexterity based. Vitality increases HP for all jobs. Tanks will receive a greater boost in HP. These are going to be your Gunbreaker, Warrior, Paladin, and Dark Knight. Again, tanks do receive attack boost from strength stat. Intelligence increases attack magic potency for all caster DPS jobs. These are the Red Mage, Black Mage, Summoner, and Blue Mage, but we don't really talk about Blue Mage just as it's a limited job and it's not used in regular gameplay. Mind increases healing magic potency. Also increases attack magic potency for Astro, White Mage, and Scholar or the healer role. You can see that each job gets kind of their own stat that increases their DPS. These are important to understand later on. Leveling 1 to 79, you want to start understanding the gear you put on and what stats you should be looking for. There's not much to do at this point other than a few instances at level 60 where you don't have job specific gear and you have a few to choose from. You don't want to pick the dexterity gear for a samurai. The game does an amazing job of going over each property, critical hit, determination, direct hit, but I'm still going to summarize it here for those who are brand new to MMOs or just new to the game. Critical hit is just that a higher potency DPS spell or even healing. This means to say that it's very important stat that many builds center around as higher damage is always better in the majority of cases. There are some builds, example being Black Mage, that has a critical hit build and a spell speed build but again majority of the time critical hit is very very important determination affects damage of both physical and magic attacks as well as hp restored while healing can you think of who might this focus on that's right healers not only hp being restored but also an increase of damage kind of the best of both worlds direct hit increases the chances of your attack dealing direct damage which is a slight increase in your regular damage very similar to critical hit but critical hit also affects healing which is why healers focus on critical hit 
more so. So this stat might be more focused on Black Mage since direct hits paired with critical hits mean big damage numbers. We will skip defense, magic defense, attack power, and magic attack power, and healing magic because, again, those are really, really self-explanatory. Let's talk about skill speed and spell speed. These are actually really important to understand because when you get into melding and endgame builds, the more skill speed and spell speed you have, the faster your rotations are. You might ask yourself why that's a big deal, but depending on your speed of your rotation, you actually might have a different set rotation if your spell speed is above a certain amount. This is seen in Black Mage as when you have different spell speeds, you actually have very different openers, as you can see on the Balance Discord. So it does really affect when you're trying to understand your damage and why abilities are not aligning when you're trying to do a specific rotation you found. Sprouts, again, might be saying, well, why do I care about this as I'm not an endgame or a casual player? What does it matter? Battle-wise, when learning rotations, it changes how you approach everything and is good to know why you aren't hitting certain timing windows. And that's true for casual content or endgame content and it could simply be because you don't have enough spell speed or skill speed. As well as you might have too much, so your skills are kind of happening too fast. Let's move on. Tenacity, this affects defense, attack, and healing when tanking only. This will also affect your damage as a tank. I will say most tank guides still focus on critical hits because of the scaling purposes, as you'll get more out of critical hit than you would tenacity. Piety affects MP regeneration for only the healer role. You will hear this a lot in guides, meld piety to comfort, as MP regeneration is purely how well you can manage it, so it's very subjective. Now that we have gone through all the stats, let's talk about Materia and Spirit Bonding. Materia is summarized pretty much as bonus stats that you can put on gear. You can meld these with crafters that you have leveled, or you can go to the Materia Melder NPC in any major city, usually next to a market board. The great thing is you don't have to have a crafter to meld, so rejoice for those who are not interested in crafting whatsoever. Remember that you do need the appropriate unlock blue quest for melding and advanced melding, so take care of those first located in Blackbush near Ulda. You can't start this until you reach a certain part of the main story, which is actually really great because there's no missing it. You may think, well, don't I want only high level materia, currently seven or eight? Well, yeah, but the low level materia you can get can be transmuted into higher materia. And it's so important for certain quests and sells for quite a bit, which is why it's worth keeping that low level materia as you never know what the game is going to throw at you or change or what you need for your builds. This is very important when it comes to crafting specifically, it is a game of stats, and when crafting, you simply cannot hit the goal if you don't have the correct stats. You can get materia through dungeons randomly when opening a chest or buy it on the market board. You also get it through spirit bonding, which is so important and I think a lot of players forget about. Spirit bonding is simply wearing gear while you gain experience. High quality gear and materia melded gear gain spirit bond at a faster rate than normal quality with no materia. You start at 1% spirit bond and when you get close to 100, you will see a small notification usually in the chat or you can check your gear. If you have the inventory grid turned on for your UI, then it will also point it out there. Once you've reached 100%, you want to extract that materia where you basically turn that spirit bond into materia. This can be random, and depending on the level of your gear, you will get different levels of materia. This is so imperative for those players at level 80 who are not extracting their materia and missing out on so much, and potentially materia selling for those critical hits and direct hits, which can go anywhere from 9,000 to sometimes 20,000 gil when it's a super hot item. Building up a bank of these is crucial if you want to play with multiple jobs, as we all usually do once we get to the end game and have completed a lot of the other tasks. You will be spending tons of gill on materia later if you don't start now. You may ask, well, why do I need so many for different jobs? Isn't it just two? 
Well, let's jump into over melding. There are gears that regularly meld two slots. After the two slots, you can over meld or advance meld. The gear will specify if you cannot do this, like this gear shows here, usually at the end of the expansion when you're at your highest item level. Crafted gear, you can usually over meld up to five slots on each piece of gear. We will focus on a crafted piece of gear so I can give you an example. We have our first two slots here, two critical hits. We're following the guide and they want us to meld more critical hit. When melding, you want to make sure you see these stats down right here. This will show you what you can meld and what you can't meld. Certain pieces are already maxed out. For the purpose of this guide, let's go with something easy. We do have the availability to meld more critical hit. After the first two slots, we are considered advanced melding, which means to add critical hit with a less chance of it melding. So now we have a 17% chance of this critical hit melding. You can see now we want to have as much material as possible because this chance only gets lower as you get to your fourth and fifth slot. You can go through a lot of materia this way and it can get very, very expensive. Ask any penta melded crafter. Leave your comment down below for the sprouts if you're watching this and how much gill you've dropped on materia melding. I myself have spent millions getting my crafters penta melded, which is all five slots melded on every piece of gear. I don't regret it as I am an end game crafter and I love crafting those expert recipes. This is just some of the basics for materia and melding for all those new sprouts who want to start understanding early on. It's great to see so many new players in games and these are the sort of topics that can be hard to figure out as a sprout. I want to thank you all for watching my videos. Consider supporting my channel by joining my YouTube channel community with channel memberships. This will give you exclusive perks which you can see down in the description box or you can simply keep on watching Final Fantasy tutorials here.